In this video, we're going to do our first example of the disk method. And because it's our first example, I'll try and go a little bit slowly and explain every piece in detail. So here we have a function and two vertical lines in the x-axis, and those all trap some area, which is right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to imagine rotating this area around the x-axis. And when we do that, what shape would we get? Well, we would get something that looks like this. And the question is, what is the volume of this solid that's formed by rotating this around the x-axis? And it turns out that there's quite a nice formula for this, for the volume of that solid. And this is called the disk method. The formula is the integral from a to b of pi r of x squared dx. This is the disk method formula for when you're rotating around the x-axis. So this is for rotating around the x-axis, which we are doing in this example. It also works if you're rotating around anything parallel to the x-axis, so any horizontal line. But for now, let's focus on this. And there's a few pieces here to talk about. So these problems are all very similar. So I like to break them down in steps. And the first step that you should always do when doing a solid of revolution problem is sketch the problem out. And since this is our first example, I already have drawn a sketch for us. So that part's done for us. We have a sketch of the function and these vertical lines that are trapping that area. Part two, we're going to skip in this video, but this is decide on a method. And what I mean by this is eventually we're going to have the disk method, the washer method, and the shell method. So eventually we're going to have to decide which of those three methods is appropriate for our particular problem. But in this case, I'm telling you we're going to use the disk method. So this decision is made for us. Okay. So again, this is our first example, so I'm keeping it easy here. So step three is find A and B. So if you notice in our formula, there's these bounds of integration. So we have to figure out what those are. And in the disk method, those bounds of integration are the leftmost and rightmost point of the area that's trapped. So in this case, that's also very easy. It's pretty much given to us. The leftmost point of the area is just x equals 1 because that's the, the vertical line that's trapping it. And the rightmost is x equals 5. So these were pretty much also given to us. And just to be clear, we have a equals 1. The lower bound is the leftmost point of the area. And b equals 5. That's the upper bound is the rightmost uh, x value of the area. OK, and now we come to maybe the main step, you might want to say, um, which is finding r of x. So before we can even find r of x, we have to talk about what is r of x. And the idea here is that we're going to uh, take this solid and we're going to pick some x value. And then we're going to imagine slicing this solid at that x value. So when we do that, what do we get? We get a circle. And maybe the x isn't quite aligned with that. So let me, let me draw that in here um, a little bit more clearly. So we pick this x value and we slice this solid. And notice that this, this um, slice of this solid is actually, you know, it's a filled in disk because we're slicing a solid there. So what is r of x? r of x is the function that tells us the radius of this circle. OK, so in other words, for this fixed x value, r of x will tell us the radius of this particular circle. All right, but if we go back to our 2D picture, which is all we'll ever really need, actually, and we fix that same x value, we can look, we can draw a line from the axis of rotation up to the edge of the area. And I hope what you can see is that this distance here is 
r of x. It is that radius of that circle that's formed, right? If we took this line and we rotated it around the x-axis, we would get exactly this circle that's down here. And the distance from the axis of rotation to the edge of the circle, that is the radius. Okay, and this r of x clearly depends on x because if we had picked this x value, the radius would be smaller. If we pick something out here, the radius would be larger. So that radius function really depends on which x value we pick. Okay, so we know what r of x is, but how do we actually find a formula for r of x? Well, it turns out that in this case it's pretty easy because this point lands on the function. And remember, f of x gives us the height of the function. So given this x value, f of x is the height of that point. But that height is exactly this distance from the axis up to that point. Or in other words, that height is exactly the r of x we're looking for. So altogether, what we find out is that in this case, r of x is just equal to f of x which in this example is one-third x. Okay, because that distance from the x-axis out to the function, that's the radius of this circle down here, but that also happens to be the height of the function. So they're the same. Okay, I hope that's clear. And now our fifth and final step is just plug in. Right? Step three and four found all the missing pieces of this formula, so now we just plug into that formula, and that formula will give us, that integral will give us the volume of this solid that we're looking for. Okay, so that uh, let, let's plug in here and do the integral from a, which is one, to b, which is five, of pi times r of x squared, and in this case r of x is just one-third x, and we have to square that, dx. Okay, so just for total clarity, this part here is r of x according to this line, and that is just this piece of the formula. All right, so really the problem is pretty much over. We've done all of the setup, all of the hard part, and now all we need to do is uh, solve this integral. And that part should be easy at this point. So let's go through it, but um, if you're comfortable with this setup, you know, you could go through this on your own or you can stick around for the, the last few minutes of the video where we actually solve this out in full. But I just wanted you to be aware that the problem is pretty much over. We've done all of the hard work already. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and actually solve this. So this is equal to the integral from 1 to 5 of pi, and now if we square 1 third, we get 1 ninth, square x, and we get x squared. And we can pull out that constant, pi times 1 ninth is pi over 9. Integral from 1 to 5 of x squared dx. And now we can take the antiderivative using the antiderivative power rule. So we add 1 to the exponent, so that's x cubed, divide by the new exponent, and then we have to evaluate that between 1 and 5. And so let's go ahead and make some more space for ourselves. So this is pi, sorry, pi over 9 times, uh, we plug in 5 and we get 5 cubed over 3 minus, and then we plug in 1, 1 cubed over 3. And so this is pi over 9 times 125 over 3 minus 1 over 3. And the whole thing simplifies to 124 pi over 27. Okay, and this is our final answer. This is the volume of that solid we had at the beginning of the video. That is the volume of the solid of revolution we were looking for. All right, so I hope this helps. In, the, in future videos, we'll do more advanced disk method examples, and then we'll move on to washer and shell. And finally, we'll move on to this, the much harder problem of setting these problems up from scratch and deciding on a method. Okay, see you in the next video.